Real-time audio processing just got very affordable. This is the Revelator IO44 from Presonus and in this video we are going to have a look at the features and audio quality of this interface and I'm going to tell you about an issue I encountered which you absolutely have to be aware before buying this interface. Hey, Julian Krauss here and I bought the Revelator IO44 as soon as it was released as it seems to have some really interesting features, mainly real-time audio processing. This means that effects like high pass filter, EQ, gate compressor, limiter and all kinds of voice effects can be used which are directly processed inside the interface and then sent to any program into your PC. This avoids audible latency problems and is something I've wanted to see for a long time in an affordable interface. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's have a look at the hardware first and then check out the audio quality and then talk a bit more about the software as this plays a big role with this interface. All the controls of the IO44 can be found on the top and what's this? A screen for ants? Seriously, the screen of the IO44 is tiny. While I appreciate the inclusion of the screen, it is really hard to monitor your levels or see the settings when you have the interface at a normal working distance away from you on your desk. To control the interface, you get an encoder knob with which you can change all kinds of settings like input gain, main output and headphone volume and even toggle phantom power or set a high pass filter. The nicer thing is that you can also control everything in the provided software, so you don't even have to touch the IO44 to change the settings. You also get a few more buttons to cycle through the channels and also two buttons to toggle between predefined processing presets. You also get a mute button, but sadly this is only for the outputs of the IO44. As this interface is marketed towards streamers, it would have been much more useful to have this mute button to mute your microphone. For me, this is a must-have feature in an interface I use for live streaming. I know in most streaming software you can create a hotkey for muting the microphone, but it would have been much better to have a direct control on the interface, like for example on the Wave XLR. In terms of inputs, the IO44 features one XLR and TRS combo input, which accepts microphone and instrument levels. Note that you can only use one at a time, so if you want to use the XLR input for a microphone and simultaneously record with an instrument like an electric guitar, then the IO44 is not the interface for you. Besides that, you get a stereo line input, which is a 3.5mm connection. This can be used to hook up your phone or things like a DJ mixer. Then you also get a headset connection. This is a 3.5mm TRRS connection, which can be used with standard headphones, but also with headsets, as this is simultaneously a microphone input. On the back you can find the USB-C connection, and the IO44 comes with a USB-C to USB Type-A cable. And then you also get a set of TRS balanced outputs to hook up your studio monitors. All in all, the build quality is pretty good, the housing is mostly out of metal, the encoder is nothing special, but it works fine, only the screen size could have been a bit bigger, or at least the font size increased considerably so that you can see your settings from a distance. Okay, let's have a quick look inside. I found it interesting that they decided to split the PCB and connect it via a ribbon cable. It's very likely that it is cheaper to manufacture this way than to have a bigger board. Not that this really matters, but I find it interesting nonetheless. We can also see something quite expensive for this interface, and that is two Cirrus Logic CS4272A2D and D2A converters. As always, let's start with the XLR input. Here's the frequency response, which looks really quite good, even at the maximum gain setting. There's a minimal amount of roll-off in the lower frequencies, but that's not something you can hear. And at a lower gain setting, this roll-off gets even smaller. Onto distortion. In the THD plus N measurement, with a typical mic level signal, you can just ever so slightly see some distortion coming in, sitting around minus 90 decibel. That's already quite low distortion and there's no real chance that you would ever hear this. So pretty good. Noise should of course also be as low as possible, so let's have a look at the dynamic range. The dynamic range is the ratio of the highest level the interface can capture and its noise floor and you want this to be as high as possible. A higher dynamic range allows you to leave yourself more headroom without introducing additional noise. With 102 dBA the IO44 definitely sits a little lower on the chart, but 100 dB is already plenty in most scenarios. Future Julian here. This part is recorded with the SM7B, which I normally use to do my preamp noise tests, as this is a very low sensitive mic and a worst case scenario for the preamp. But I have to talk about something different first, which you might have already noticed. From time to time I do experience some amount of interference with the IO44. When I use condenser mics, which need less gain, this is much less of an issue, 
but especially with dynamic microphones this can become very audible like right now or in an example which I'll show you in a second. Now the IO44 can have good preamp noise performance when there is no interference source messing with the recording. Then the IO44 can provide a very competitive equivalent input noise. But that does hardly matter when there is interference audible in the recording. I've also noticed that the IO44 is very allergic to my speak amplifier which will create additional noise. On my desk I have a class D amplifier to power my loudspeakers and this amp puts out ultrasonic noise. Sadly the IO44 is very susceptible to this type of noise. Let me turn on the amp. Ok, as you can hear there is a lot of noise in the background of this recording and this makes the IO44 unusable in my particular setup. No other interface I've tested so far has shown this problem, which indicates that there is something inherently different in how the IO44 handles HF interference. Ok, I turned off the amp. So if you have a class D amplifier or another device that spews out ultrasonic noise, then there is the possibility that the IO44 will pick it up, resulting in an elevated noise floor. I really hope that Presonus will address this in a future hardware revision and if I get any information on this topic I will put a comment below this video. So check the comment section below. I have not heard of many people experiencing this problem, but my particular unit definitely has this problem and it can ruin some recordings. So you absolutely have to be aware of this. Next up let's have a look at the stereo line in on the IO44. I will keep this short as the performance is not too different from the mic input. Here is the frequency response and it is pretty much a straight line in the audible range, which is exactly what we want to see. In terms of distortion there is again just a hint of it at minus 90 dB, which I would argue is not audible anyways, so all good. And as already with the mic input the dynamic range with about 103 dB is not the greatest, but already very usable and it is highly unlikely that you will hear this noise. As mentioned in the beginning the IO44 uses two balanced quarter inch outputs for the monitors and let's have a look at their performance. You know the drill by now, here's the frequency response, which I really don't have any complaints about. The THD plus N versus amplitude graph shows a familiar curve, with the distortion only setting in close to the maximum output level, and even then it stays below minus 80 decibels, which I think is quite good and inaudible in most situations. With the different colors you can see that the performance is also frequency independent, which is great. By the way, the maximum output level is around 8 dBV, that's a bit on the lower side, but I can't complain too much. For dynamic range we once again sit around the 100 dB mark, which is totally ok. The IO44 definitely won't win any prizes here, but that's still fine. And we have just a few more measurements left. Here's my infamous headphone spec table, which lets you directly compare many different interfaces. I soon have to find a different solution for this, as this does not really fit on the screen anymore, but let's focus on the important parts for now. Frequency response again. Yes, and a really good one I might add. So no complaints here. One thing that jumps out with the IO44 is the relatively high output impedance. This can change the sound, especially in the bass region when you use low impedance headphones. If absolute precision, not that this is generally a thing with headphones, is critical, then I advise to resort to headphones with at least an impedance of 80 ohms. The IO44 can also drive these headphones to loud listening levels. Only if you go with very high impedance headphones around 600 ohm, then the interface starts to struggle a bit. The distortion with low impedance headphones is a tad higher than I would like to see, but I doubt that this is audible because the majority of distortion is in the second harmonic, which is mostly masked by the fundamental. With high impedance headphones the performance is still a bit better. So not the best performance, but still nothing that you should be concerned about. The noise of the output is also ok too. With very sensitive in-ear monitors you might start to hear a slight underlying hiss, but with over-ear headphones that's definitely not the case. The left and right channels stay equally loud regardless of the volume setting, because of the digital volume control. And lastly the crosstalk is really low, which indicates that the IO44 can produce a nice stereo image. Next up let's have a look at the universal control, which is the software that controls the interface. Of course one of the first things I did is to measure the latency with and without the effects enabled. I measured this with a sample rate of 48 kHz and the latency is 1.2 milliseconds. This is so low that you cannot notice it, so I can comfortably say that this is real time audio effects processing. Additionally this latency does not change regardless how many effects you throw at it. Even with the more demanding voice settings, the latency still stayed at an imperceptibly low 1.2 milliseconds. 
that's exactly what you would like to see. Great job, Presonus. I also like that the effects are directly included with the interface, no need to spend any additional money, and especially for voice processing, there's pretty much everything there that you need. That said, one thing I'm missing is a proper input level meter, especially for the gate and compressor, where you need to set your threshold depending on your input level, a proper level meter would have been great. You do get a gain reduction meter though, which is better than nothing. I want to mention again that you can control everything from the IO44 via the software, so you don't need to reach for your interface, which I think is quite nice. The software is not without its problems though, for instance one time it insisted that a new firmware is available, but this had a lower version than my current version and it wouldn't let me access the interface settings unless I update. I had to completely uninstall and reinstall the software and then everything worked fine. On a more positive note, I did report another bug to Presonus a while ago, and this was fixed in the latest firmware release, so it's nice to see that they are actively improving the software. So the software is quite competent, there is a lot of flexibility in terms of audio processing and routing, which is very appreciated, especially at this price point. Lastly, let's check out the round trip latency, which should be as low as possible to not perceive any delay when for example using an Ampsum. Here are the times with 48 kHz and different buffer sizes. These times are decent and correctly reported by the driver, which is always nice to see. But it is 1 to 2 milliseconds longer than better performing interfaces in this price range. And here one more time with a sample rate of 96 kHz, which looks pretty much the same. All in all, I think the IO44 is a mixed bag. On one side it does offer real-time audio processing, which is really cool to see in this price range. But it also has a few things that are bothering me, like for example the mute button is only for the outputs and the missing level meters for the effects. The biggest issue though is the aforementioned susceptibility to HF interference. This might not be a problem in your particular setup, but I would definitely make sure that the seller has a return policy in place in case you are experiencing interference problems. I really hope that Prisionus will bring a hardware revision update that addresses this issue. As I said, if I get any more information on this topic, I will pin a comment, so check the comment section below. In terms of audio performance, the IO44 is pretty average, in some aspects even slightly below what you can get with other interfaces in this price range, but I think that the integrated processing completely makes up for any non-perfect measurement. And I want to emphasize that the audio quality of the IO44 is already decent. I really have to applaud Prisonus here for bringing proper real-time audio processing to a very affordable level. With the control software you also get a nice amount of flexibility for audio routing. Still, in my experience the IO44 seems to be a bit hit or miss. For some people it will work totally fine, while others might run into problems. If you want to give this interface a shot, definitely make sure you have the possibility to return it in case something goes wrong. Okay, that's it for now. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you didn't already do so, and I will see you all in the next one.